camera's rolling whenever you feel inspired. All right. We're ready? Yeah, we're ready to go. Everything has a beginning, middle, and end, doesn't it? Except eternity. And we're eternal. Seventy-seven. I've been playing sixty-six years. Started when I was eleven. Wanted to be a concert classical pianist. Grew up in a town of four hundred people in Iowa, so I never heard anything but country and some real corny popular music, uh, classical. Wanted to be a virtuoso concert pianist, but by the time I played from eleven to seventeen, I saw that was impossible. Couldn't even play the minute waltz, the simplest song there is in classic music. So, music was going to be a hobby. Oh. Every guy, man in the 50s had to do military. My stepfather said, Join the Navy. Otherwise, you'll spend two years marching in the Army. You might get a ship. Well, I did. And by the grace of the good Lord, I got sent to a, the Admiral's flagship. And there, I heard jazz. I heard Clifford Brown, the awesome trumpet player. And I knew it was my destiny to be a jazz musician. I know that now because I just overheard the trumpet player yeah. say, that Clifford Brown is such a virtuoso. I said, I don't care what he plays. I want to hear a piece of virtuoso. So I went, and there he was, this jazz club. And the whole band was good, but Clifford Brown had so much spirit in him, so much of the presence of God, and so much beauty in his tone and his whole thing, that for four hours I sat there with tears running down my cheeks and goosebumps. At the end of the night, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I said, I get out of the Navy, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> but that night, after four hours of Clifford Brown, I said, that's what I'm going to do with my life, be a jazz musician. Yes. That night I said, that's what I'm going to try to do, try to reach that level. Clifford Brown, where somebody would hear me and it would transform their life. They wouldn't be the same person when they walked out as they were when they walked in. I don't think I've probably ever reached that level, but I know that a lot of blessing and power and love comes through me, and that I've been a big blessing in a lot of people's lives. And I was raised in a fundamentalist, fanatical, Dutch Reformed Christian community that only taught about hellfire and damnation and fear. They never taught me Jesus was my best friend, and he would counsel me and help me and guide me. They taught me he's up there just ready with a handful of lightning bolts. I'm gonna mess up, I'm gonna nail you. There's nothing but fear, and that's the opposite of who he is. You know, he's right there to support us whenever we make a mistake. He's the first one who's gonna say, well, let me help you do better next time. Not to condemn us, but to, but to encourage us, you know? So, but I still doubt it. I had that programming in my youth. And so I always question, am I playing these nightclubs where they serve beer and alcohol and everything and all these people, you know, most of them probably don't even go to church. And should I really be playing here, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what the Bible said. They, they condemned him because he hung out with, the, you know, not the religious leaders, but yeah. with the regular people. Yeah. So all doubt was removed whether I was supposed to be doing this in these places where I play. When in Las Vegas, within one week, I was playing a piano bar, and two different people came in and told me I came out here for one last drink before I went home to commit suicide. One guy was going to shoot himself, another guy was going to hang himself. They said, but I felt God coming through your piano playing. And it gave me the courage to go on. Another thing was that a couple came to me and said, we came here to discuss our divorce plans. Your music made us realize why we fell in love in the first place. And now we're not going to get divorced. So I said, what am I supposed to be? I mean, should I do it now? Am I supposed to be a minister, a counselor, an evangelist, a missionary? Finally, the Spirit said, you're doing all of those things when you play the piano. Without a word, you're counseling people. 
you're preaching, you're lifting, you're missionary, you're spreading the joy, you're spreading the spirit without even speaking. This is a song I wrote for my wife, Cynthia, in 1960. like Leslie Caron. I was getting one degree, bachelor's degree in piano, music theory, and composition. Cynthia was getting two master's degrees at the same time, one in English and one in history. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard of that. Two masters. Isn't that incredible? Two masters. So that was Kansas City, where Charlie Parker came from. So I had the pleasure of working there with people that Charlie Parker grew up with, and they had two musicians' union, unions in the 50s, a black and a white. The white union was open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, no piano, no nothing going on. The black musicians' union was open seven days a week till midnight. It had a bar and a grand piano. <laughs> so you'd hang out there, we'd hang out there seven nights a week. And jam and then we go someplace until they closed at two and then we went to another place that closed at four and then to another wow. place that closed at six and just really wanted it. It yeah. took 15 years before I got really good but I really wanted it. Mm. So finally I became considered one of the best you know but it's just by the grace of God. But the amazing thing is that I've been playing 66 years and every time I play I discover something new. Mm. Thank you so much, Cal. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you.